I'm heading off on a trip. Yeah, I hope you're doing well. <laughs> Welcome back to the studio again. I am heading off to Korea and the US next Sunday. Literally at the time of filming this video, I'm heading off next Sunday. It's so close and there's just so much to think about. You can see the studio is a little bit messy because there's been so much going on, but I'm super excited. I've been on a lot of trips for percussion purposes in the last six years, whether it was, well, of course, before COVID, but I've been to the United States, I've been to Japan, Taiwan, Hong Kong many times. And every time I went on one of those trips, the setup that I brought was completely different. This is the mallet bag setup I'm thinking of bringing for this trip. I've been thinking about which one to bring because I just have so many mallet bags now. And as you know, if you've watched my channel, I have a lot of mallets. But this particular trip is different because I'm gonna be away for a month, but I'm not always going to be playing percussion. The first two weeks, I'm just going to be in Korea doing touristy stuff, <laughs> like my first real holiday in three years. And then after Korea, I'm heading over to the United States where I'll be playing my solo concert together. That is going to be in San Jose. So if you're in the Bay Area, please come check it out. It's a free concert. And then after that, I'm heading over to PASIC, which you already know about. Which is why I'm making this video because I've made a what's in my mallet bag video for pretty much every trip I've been on and every year of this channel. And this one is a particularly appropriate one because you can see all of the changes I've made in the last few years. Let's have a look. There's a lot to think about, so I'm going to go through every aspect of my mallet bag setup and tell you why I made those choices. And if you'd like to see more content like this, make sure you hit that red subscribe button below to keep off my uploads. This is my Galaxy Grip Bag from Humes & Berg. As you know, if you've watched my channel since 2016, you will have known that this bag has been my bread and butter mallet bag because it's just so convenient. I mean, look at it. It's so cute. This bag is really popular because it's a barrel bag. So you can basically just stuff everything underneath this little barrel shaped lid. Oh, there's a mallet sticking out. <laughs> you can just zip it up and then it becomes this little cylinder which you can just put flat on the floor. Um, it's really easy to take mallets out of, which is great for rehearsals and stuff like that. And I have taken this bag on many trips. I took it to Malaysia, I took it to Japan, I took it to the US twice. You can see that I've still got my Cafe Pacific business class tag on it. It's a great bag, it has a shoulder strap. It's pretty affordable for what it is. It's still definitely one of my top three stick bags of all time. Look at how I'm hugging it. I love this bag. This bag's greatest strength is also its weakness. The fact that it's a cylinder makes it very convenient for storing mallets in the upright position, but it can't really store anything else. For this trip, I won't actually need that many mallets. You can see in this bag, this is kind of like my B mallet collection now. I've got the Nano Mamuras, I've got Nancy Zeltzman, I've got my Naoko Takadas, which I used a lot before my signature mallets arrived, and I've got all of my orchestral Encore mallets. Thank you once again to Encore Mallets and Salius Percussion for sending me all of these mallets. It's kind of weird looking at this bag being like, I didn't buy any of these. <laughs> But yes, I'm only playing solo marimba on this trip, so there's no reason for me to bring heaps of mallets. And in terms of other pockets for storage, I mean, there's this little thing here, which is honestly pretty useless. <laughs> so ultimately, this kind of stick bag is really great if you're playing percussion for like the entire trip. For example, if I was going on like a percussion camp of some sort, like a percussion intensive, and I really need to use my bag like all the time. And if you're gonna do that, you would bring this bag on as like a carry-on, and then you probably bring like a backpack separately with your iPad. That would work for me if I was doing more percussion on this trip, but I'm not. So that brings me to this bag, my Encore Mallets keyboard mallet bag. Now this bag is one of the traditional foldy type bags and it can hold a lot of mallets. Like I'm pretty sure I can hold like 30 pairs pretty comfortably and even more if you decide to stuff it really full. It's actually a really nice bag and I've wanted to own one of these for a long time. I finally got one when I became an Encore Mallets artist. This bag is really great for having a whole bunch of mallets but also other things. You can also put like documents, uh, a folder, iPad, uh, my pedal, all that kind of stuff will go into these big pockets and there's one on each side as well. So sometimes I put the iPad here and I'll put all my other stuff in the front. So it's good for that reason. One thing I really don't like about this bag is this. This thing, because it literally is just one strap for this heavy, big bag, which you put on your shoulder kind of like this. Ooh, look at my shoulder bag. Ooh, I'm so cool, ooh. Okay, obviously I'm joking. Some people do like the crossbody slash shoulder bag look. I'm personally not a fan. I don't normally wear like messenger bags and stuff. For me, the other turn off of this bag, as much as I love it, like it's so good, this thing at the top here, this thing here, 
You see this? So this felt material that they have at the top, it feels really nice and soft, but because it's so soft, it actually makes the mallet hairs kind of like stick a little bit to the head, especially when you have a lot of them in the back. So when I tried putting all my signature mallets in here, it kind of rubbed up a little bit. I also found that this part at the top is actually quite thin. So my plan for my stick bag is to actually put it in my check-in luggage, which is like a really big no-no, I know. But at the same time, I don't actually need my mallets until the later part of the trip. So there's no reason for me to carry it on the plane. I've got other gear to carry, like this camera and a whole bunch of other tech stuff. Yeah, I needed a bag that had a little bit more padding than this. This is a little bit too thin to put inside check-in luggage. It might get my mallets all crushed and broken and I'd be all sad. Which brings me to the mallet bag that I finally decided on. The one that I've used for a couple of trips before. It is my old friend, the Marimba One Mallet Bag. Now, as you'll notice from the logo, this is the old Marimba One Mallet Bag. They've made an upgraded version recently, which I know they've changed the logo, but I think they've also actually improved the material and I might actually get one of the newer ones. This one I've had since the very early beginning of my show when Marimba One first started working with me on the review videos, the mallet reviews. It's pretty good. And I'm not saying that as like a Marimba One artist, like actually it's pretty decent because because it has backpack straps. I'm so glad it has actual backpack straps so I can just chuck it on the back like this. It's like super comfortable and super easy to carry. By the way, all of my mallets are already inside this bag. So all the stuff I'm gonna bring is already in here and it feels super convenient. You can see I've already attached all of my accessories, which I'll tell you about later on. It has all the things I like about the Encore mallets bag like similar sort of material. It's pretty hardy, but as you can see here, the sides are a little bit thicker. You can see that there's this little flap that protects the mallet. So the mallets are there. Ta -da! This will make a great thumbnail. But it's also just an extra layer of protection when you close the entire package. So it ends up feeling a lot more supported inside. I don't feel the individual shafts of my mallets as much as I did with the other bag. It's gonna be flat in my suitcase. I'm gonna put clothes on either side and it's gonna be pretty well protected. It's kind of like wrapping the whole thing in bubble wrap. And because it's a backpack, I can actually carry other stuff with it, which I'll go through in a second, but it just means when I'm in places like San Jose, where I'm playing my solo concert, I can bring this whole bag and it can have all of my supplies in these two pockets up the front here. Very easy, they can be filled quite big actually because they're quite deep. They go all the way down to here. Is it waterproof? I don't know, but it's, it's probably the best mallet bag I have. Uh, in terms of everything that I own right now. So now we're gonna talk about what's actually inside the bag, but if you're enjoying the video so far, please give me a thumbs up. Okay, now one of the side benefits of this bag is that you can actually hang it up, as you can see, on any marimba bar post. In a pinch, you can literally just hook it onto anything, which I think is awesome. It means that if I have nowhere to put the bag, I can just hang it onto the side and all the mallets are easily accessible, which is great for practice and rehearsal. Not the greatest for when you're performing because you just kind of bang into it all the time, but yeah, I've actually really grown to like this feature of this bag. Now with the mallets that you bring on a trip, usually the thing I found is that you should definitely pack just a little bit more than what you actually need, but not too much. So when I went to Malaysia in 2017, I brought just enough van sizes for van sizes. Jeez, I used to play in van sizes. Mm. I brought just enough van sizes for my piece, but one of them actually started wearing out a bit too much. Like it was a little bit too cracky and it didn't sound very even, but I didn't have any more. I didn't bring the spare pair that I had sitting in here. So I had to sort of make do of it and it just didn't sound very good. So I always try to make sure I bring just a little bit more than what I need. Now, as you can see, all the Marimba mallets are clearly the same model, the same kind and they're none other than the Adam Tan series from Encore Mallets. This is of course my signature mallet series from Encore Mallets which is one of the reasons why I'm heading to PASIC this year because this is like the official launch year for my mallets and they all have this grey camo tape which is my favourite kind of tape, tennis tape, Wilson overgrip tennis tape to be exact. You can check out my video on taping mallets over here. It shows you how to do it like this. So I basically got two pairs of every model here. This is the model five, which is the base mallet. We've got the models four, which is the uh, medium soft mallet. And then I've got the purple ones, my favorite ones of all time. The AT3s, which is like the medium mallet. The AT2s, which is the medium hard mallet in violet. And I finally got the brand new revamped AT1s, which is the hard mallet. So between all of these mallets that I have here, I can pretty much make any graduated setup that I need. Obviously the graduated setup you can buy 
preset is this one here in the middle, your 4332, which is my go-to graduated set at the moment. Base mallets at the bottom, if I ever want to make things softer, I've got the hard ones at the top if I want to make things harder, etc, etc. And that's literally all I need. Like, I decided I wasn't going to bring over these ones, which are my Nanai Memuras. As you can see, they are very, very, very worn out. They are very worn to the point where you can actually see the core through them, so these don't sound so good anymore. And besides, my mallets are pretty similar anyway, so I thought I would just leave them at home. Similarly, I'm not bringing my other favorite encore mallets, which are Naoko Takadas. I really like these for articulate playing, but on this concert, I will not be playing super articulate hard pieces. Even if I was, probably could just use the top end of my own mallet series. Now you might be wondering, why did I decide to bring two pairs of each one? Why don't I just bring one pair? I could definitely make do with just one of each model, right? Well, clearly I did it because it looks so aesthetically pleasing. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> In my experience, I've always found there's always two situations. One of them is you find one of the mallets breaks or something on stage and you need another one. So you're like, oh, I'm so glad I brought another pair. The other situation is if you decide that you're gonna play with someone else and they want to have the same mallets as you. So you want to lend them some mallets. Oh no, you didn't bring enough for the two of you. What are you gonna do? And I've been told that there's gonna be some people who wanna play with me at San Jose. So I decided to bring two pairs. And as you can see, the front row of this mallet bag, the bottom row of my mallets here, these are a little bit more worn in because I've been using them for the last six months or so. But the ones at the back are perfectly dead stock. Like I haven't used them at all. That being said, I've actually worn these in quite a lot and they still sound basically the same. Yeah, literally the same. <laughs> you can also see my dead stock ones, they're not actually wrapped yet, so I might actually wrap those next week before I leave for the trip. But yeah, those are the Marimba mallets. I'm not gonna bring any other ones, I don't need any other ones. Thank you Encore for making amazing mallets. And then over here we have some Vibe mallets. Now why am I bringing Vibe mallets? Because again, in my repertoire, which is what this trip is based on, my original music, there are a couple of vibraphone pieces. So there's a possibility that I might need to play some vibraphone music. So I decided that I would bring my favorite vibraphone mallets right now which are the Encore Mallets Brian Carrot series. The Brian Carrot series is really great for like jazz style playing because it's like kind of warm but it also has a bit of that articulate profile thanks to this spaceship head design. And then finally the sticks. I decided to bring some JM2s from Salia's Percussion. JM2s, the Jeff Moore sticks are just really fun to play with. They're really nice and big. I personally like large snare drum sticks better, even though I'm not really a snare drum person. There's just something about having really big snare drum sticks that feels really nice. So remember, if you're thinking of what mouse to bring, just bring what you need and then slightly more. Okay, now let's talk about the other things in my stick bag. So I've actually got some pencils over here. Pencils are super important because when you're in rehearsal, when you're practicing by yourself, making annotations just makes your life a lot easier and you just look a lot more professional when you have your own pencil. So this is my original Marimba 1 pencil. I have two of these left. Uh, Marimba 1, if you can watch this, uh, please make more pencils. <laughs> this is another secret weapon of percussion stuff. So you wouldn't think of putting this if you don't wear glasses, but even if you don't wear glasses, a microfiber cloth is just awesome. You can clean so many things with it, whether it's your phone, camera lens, like this lens right here, you know, like... Ooh. Oh, you're all clean now. For those of you who are interested, this is a K&F concept cloth because I just bought an ND filter, so it came for free. This little pocket over here is empty at the moment, but I'm going to put in my Soundbrenner mini window earplugs. If you haven't checked out the video for that, it's over here. These are still my favorite earplugs because they have adjustable filters, so you can move the filter in an open and closed, depending on how much attenuation you want. And they do this thing. Magnets. These are really great for when I'm teaching, especially if I'm teaching in louder environments and rehearsing in louder environments, or if I'm watching a concert that is loud, but I still want to hear all the details. I'll also bring an ordinary pair of earplugs, which I'm going to put in this little canister over here. This is the Soundbrenner earplug canister, which actually comes with something else that I'm bringing on this trip, which is this, my Soundbrenner core smartwatch. Since we're on the topic of accessories, we might as well talk about what else I'm going to be putting in my stick bag because as you can see, we have, as I mentioned, the front pocket of my Marimba 1 mallet bag. 
which will be used to carry a whole bunch of extra things that I'll need in addition to mallets, because obviously mallets are great, but you definitely need other stuff too when you're a percussionist. This is the Soundbrenner Core. It's a metronome smartwatch that I've had for a couple of months now. It's really, really fun to use for rehearsals and for performances, and especially in lessons when I'm teaching students and I want to just tap out a tempo. The thing I use the most is the metronome function, obviously, and if I just tap a tempo on this, you can see it tells you what the tempo is. So that says 121.5. And that's just really handy for if I'm like following along with a performance and I want to know how fast the person is going. The fact that I can just do this with just a tap of my watch is so cool. If I actually turn the metronome on by double tapping, it basically vibrates super hard to help you with the timing. Now, this is not the greatest for percussionists, but you can actually also strap this to a body strap. It comes with like a leg strap, a body strap. I usually just use it on my wrist because I just use this for quick tempos, but you might've also heard. My phone is in sync with the watch, with the Soundbrenner metronome app, which is a free app. So you can basically have these things work in tandem. You can have more complicated beat patterns as well, uploaded through here, and you can also control it through the app as well which is really handy. So this is a really good watch for mentoring and teaching people in master classes and stuff like that. It's just super handy to have it on without having to look at your phone because you know sometimes people pull up their metronome on their phone they look like these. I'm getting the metronome, just give me a second. I, it's a bit rude to like your students and stuff. So this is just a little bit more polite and it's very low key. It looks relatively low key on the wrist. It looks just basically like any other smartwatch, even though I'm not really a smartwatch person. It also has a tuner, which is a contact tuner. So you can actually put this attachment on it that uses this magnet thing here to attach to an instrument like a guitar or something like that. Decibel meter, which tells you how loud things are in the room at the moment. Um, that might be useful for protecting your ears. It also does, of course, your regular smartphone notifications. A very handy tool that I will be bringing on this trip. I'll use it at PASIC as well because it's just awesome. Let me know down in the comments below if you'd like to see a full video about the Soundbrenner Core. Otherwise, you can get your very own Soundbrenner Core from my link, soundbrenner.com forward slash amtan for 20% off. iPad. This iPad fits perfectly into the stick bag. I basically put it in any one of the front pockets and it just swallows it up very easily. The iPad, originally I was like, I don't really need sheet music for this because all my music I'm playing is memorized. But at the same time, Sometimes you need sheet music to refer to and if I'm doing this masterclass thing, I'll probably need my pieces. I did also make a video about how to go paperless with your sheet music, whether it's with an iPad or anything else. You can check that video out over here. In that video, I also said that you need to have something to help you turn pages when you're performing with it. So here is my Soundbrenner Stomp made by Coda Music. I'm sure you've heard of this before. It's a really cool hard pedal. All I have to do is just turn it on by pressing this button. It's already connected and then boom, boom, boom. I can change pages whenever I want. <laughs> and of course you can get the stomp using the same link down below, soundbrenner.com forward slash adam10. <laughs> Now, other small things that I'm gonna put in my stick bag as well, obviously having an iPad is all well and good, but what if it's out of battery? So, I'm gonna be bringing this. This is my X-Power Universal Travel Adapter. It has these prongs which come out for different countries. That's Australia, or if I turn this like this, it becomes USA. Here's one for the UK, which is like the three prong thing, which works for uh, Malaysia and Singapore and stuff like that. I like this because obviously all the prongs are in here, but it also has a USB type C PD port for charging things like phones and stuff quickly. I really hate slow charging. And if you're charging the iPad, this charger, I think it's a, how many watt is this? 33 watt? Not quite enough for a MacBook Pro, but I'm not gonna put my MacBook Pro in here because I don't need it. And then we've got two regular USB A ports at the front as well. So this is just a really great thing to have. I'll link something similar in the description below. I recommend getting this over like lots of little travel adapters. And then of course, in order to use something like this, I always bring a cable. So this is the Anchor USB-C power line cable. It's really well made, it's braided, and it's very easy to roll up, fold up, whatever. The amount of times I've taken rehearsals or I've taught classes where someone's like, ah, my phone's dying, ah, I've only got 5% battery left. Now these, I used to talk about these all the time on the channel. These are finger protectors slash toe protectors. If I was playing something really difficult like Merlin or Velocities or something and I really wanted to make sure I get every extra bit of mileage I can out of my fingers and hands, then I might use something like this. When I was first developing my technique, I used to use finger protectors a lot. So it just depends, but if you're looking for more comfort in your practice, I highly recommend bringing some of these. On a similar topic, I always make sure I bring these two band-aids. Band-aids are just really great for all kinds of injuries, not even just the 
finger ones, but just if you fall over or something like that on a trip or a tour, it can be really detrimental if you're bleeding all over the place. And yeah, I know the whole fuss about COVID is kind of dying down a bit, but I also make sure I bring some masks because sometimes in certain countries, it's regulation to wear masks. For example, in Korea, we still have to wear masks indoors. Another thing that I've been bringing on all of my percussion trips, even since the very first one that I took to America in 2016, is this. This is a portable recorder. It's the Tascam, what is this one called? DR40, that's right. <laughs> my DR40, I used to have a DR05, which I sold. And then I upgraded to this one because it has XLR inputs, which is really great if they have like a mic set up in the area that you're going to and you want to get a recording for yourself, you can always just run it through here. I've played in venues before where they don't have anyone recording anything and it's up to me to record it. So I just put this up and then I put my camera up, this vlog camera, and it sounds okay. So yeah, this is like a really small thing to bring but it makes a big difference other things i've got batteries i've got a whole bunch of spare batteries so this is one of my nine volt rechargeables this is for the pedal in case it runs out but as you can see it's a rechargeable battery if you have micro usb i hate micro usb but whatever and the last thing that i have on my stick bag as you might have saw earlier on in this video is this little thing over here this thing here this is the PGY Tech Beetle Clip. This clip, which you can take off and put at any time. Oh, I've actually put it upside down. Oh! <laughs> this half goes into here, and then you kind of just loop this thing around. Okay, and then you have this clip, which doesn't move at all. It's really, really handy. And then I've got like a quick release plate that goes onto my camera. Basically, you just slide this thing straight in, like that. And even if I just do that, it's not going anywhere. But yeah, having this clip over here means that I can grab the camera that I'm filming on right now, take it off the tripod and just stick it straight into here with the same plate. It uses the same Arca Swiss plate. It's just awesome. If you wanna check out my video about my vlog setup, it's over here. So yeah, that is my what's in my mallet bag for 2022 travel edition. Let me know down in the comments below if you have any questions about this mallet bag or what's in it, or if you have any of your own mallet bag setups that you'd like to share, please let me know. I'd love to see what you put in yours. And if you enjoyed the video, please give me a thumbs up. I really appreciate it. I'm so excited for this trip, not only because of Korea, but because of the US part where I'm gonna be playing in San Jose, and then I'm gonna be meeting some of you at PASIC as well. This is gonna be so fun. Again, if you wanna to come to the San Jose concert, it's welcome to anybody. It's totally free. Details are in the description down below. 6th of November, 7 p.m. at the Valley Christian High School Conservatory of the Arts. And finally, if you haven't already, hit that red subscribe button below to keep up my uploads, as I'll still be making content even when I'm away, and I will be uploading PASIC vlogs to this channel for those of you who can't make it to PASIC. It's gonna be an insane week in Indianapolis. I can't wait. Wait. Thank you so much for watching this week's episode and I'll see you next week for another episode of The Studio. Good night.